Welcome into Crystal Ball College Football. Today, I have an interesting take for everyone out there, and hopefully it's not too controversial for everyone that's watching, but Bijan Robinson should not be taken in the first round of the NFL draft. And I know that comes across as very simplified, but every mock draft that I've seen for the most part has him going in the first round. There's a lot of teams at the end of the first round that could use a superstar running back like Bijan Robinson is. So let's talk about what he's done really quick, and then we'll get into my reasons why. So 3,400 yards, a little over that, 6.3 yards per carry, 33 touchdowns on the ground, 805 yards receiving, eight touchdowns through the air in three seasons, very good player. Anyone that watches him knows he's a very good player. He's my top running back in this draft class. And to me, it's not all that close. Um, it's him and Jameer Gibbs with um, me giving the edge to Bijan because I think he can be a legit workhorse running back. He gets compared to Saquon Barkley. That's been a comparison that's been floated around for a couple years now. It's gotten more traction now that he's actually being able to enter the NFL draft. Now that he's finally in it, Everyone's comparing him to Saquon. And I can see why. You know, big bodies, big frames, strong, powerful running backs with really, really good speed uh, in the open field. And really, if you watch that Penn State team and you watch this year's Texas team, you know, very much were carried by their run game. Very much were carried by Saquon and Bijan. Makes a whole lot of sense. I completely understand that. And again, he's my top running back. But here's the deal. Since 2018, I w I'm going to give you the running backs that have been taken in the first round. And the reason I use 2018 as the cutoff is because that was Saquon's year, um, 2018. And he was really the last running back taken inside that top 10 group. And that's that happened far more in the past when you had Christian McCaffrey, Leonard Fournette. I mean, goodness, Trent Richardson. Like, you had running backs taken in the top five, top 10 of the NFL draft. That's just not happening as much even anymore even when there are elite running backs. So, since 2018, here's your first round running backs. Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, Clyde edwards elair Josh Jacobs, Saquon Barkley, Rashad Penny, Sony Michelle. That's not a great hit rate. And if I were going through these, Najee Harris was drafted you know, pretty high. I think he's already trending downward in his career. He was an older running back. Travis Etienne missed a whole year, came back this year, looked great. Looks like an explosive playmaker um, for the Jaguars, but also let's not forget that Urban Meyer drafted Etienne in his draft. Clyde edwards Elair. I think most people would say that the Chiefs made a mistake drafting him and that they could have had a couple of the running backs I'll mention here in a little bit, but they definitely could have had an upgrade um, in the draft. Instead, they were relying on Jarek McKinnon and Isaiah Pacheco in the Super Bowl. Saquon, we know, awesome when healthy. Josh Jacobs, a couple awesome years, a couple down years. <clears throat> Good player. I don't know that he's one of the best running backs in the league. Probably top 10, but I'm not sure that he's much higher than that. And then Rashad Penny and Sony Michelle. Penny, good when healthy. Not healthy very often. Sony Michelle. Nah, I don't even know if he's in the league anymore. And if he is, he's not making an impact. So those are the first round picks. So keep those in mind as I go through these second round draft picks of the running back position. So here we go. Kenneth Walker, James Cook, Javante Williams, DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers, J.K. Dobbins, A.J. Dillon, Miles Sanders, Nick Chubb, Brees Hall, Ronald Jones, Carrion Johnson, Darius Geis. I, I, you know, if you're going through that, there are a couple guys in this group that are far better than the ones in, in the top group. I, I, you know, personally, I think DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, Javante Williams, before he got hurt, looked like he was turning into a stud. J.K. Dobbins can't stay healthy. He's a really good player. Miles Sanders was just in the Super Bowl playing well. Nick Chubb might be the best running back in the league. Um, Cam Akers finally got healthy, played well down the stretch. Kenneth Walker was amazing this season. I just, there's so much value here in the second round. And it goes to, it points to this thing of why would you draft a running back in the first round when you could get these guys in the second round? To me, I, I don't really know the answer to that. And that's kind of where I'm at currently with Bijan. You know, 
Most teams in the NFL, they've adjusted to this. And we're, we're seeing that because running backs aren't going in the top 10. If they are drafted in the first round, it's at the end of the first round and then in the second round. That's why I just, I don't see a need for a team to go go ahead and take this risk. And we're seeing, you know, these free agent running backs coming in, making a big impact and being really good on the teams that they go to. We're seeing in the Super Bowl this year, you know, we saw Miles Sanders, not a first round pick. Kenneth Gainwell, not a first round pick. On the flip side, Jarek McKinnon, 29 years old, not a first round pick. Isaiah Pacheco, a six round pick and a rookie. You don't need a great running back to be good in the NFL. And the running back position, unfortunately, is the most replaceable position in the NFL. And that's what we're seeing right now. You can get things done without having an elite running back. And I think we, we've started to see that more and more. And we're seeing NFL teams trend towards that, which is why it's so shocking to me to continue to see running backs just constantly appearing at the end of the first round when there's value on the board at the wide receiver position, on the offensive line, on the defensive line, um, defense in general, more irreplaceable positions where they could take a player like that. So going into kind of the specifics of this, because, right, I, I got to make a specific take as far as where who who's the team linked to him. And the Bills are the team that's been linked the most to Bijan. I think the Cowboys are kind of in that mix as well, just because you don't know things with Zeke. Tony Pollard got hurt. They might be in the running also, and both are at the end of the first round. But my question is, if you're the Bills, uh, even the Cowboys as well, I would say that both teams have other needs, especially at the wide receiver position, to where I don't think this is a great pick. Um and here's why. I think the Bills could trade back from pick 27 and get a second round pick and a third round pick. Um, that would give them two second rounders and then you'd have another third round pick as well. And they could use those picks to take a Ty J Spears in the second round, take a Josh Downs at wide receiver to give you a complimentary piece to Stephon Diggs. Um, and now you're talking, would you rather have Bijan or would you rather have a running back and a wide receiver? And watching what happened to the Bills this year, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to have a running back in the second round, which I've gone through. There's a great hit rate of second round running backs. And then a wide receiver in the second round, which again, a pretty good hit rate at the wide receiver position for second round picks as well. I'm taking the two over the one. And that's simple math in my eyes. And that's the reason why I don't think Bijan should go in the second round or in the first round, even though I think he is a very, very talented player and the best running back prospect in this class. Also, that would help Bijan, in my eyes, potentially find a landing spot that could be better for him. Not saying the Bills wouldn't be a great landing spot, but I do think that his skill set could be used in better ways by some other teams because the Bills, simply put, they run Josh Allen and that's all they've been doing. Now, they may adjust at some point, but right now, that's been their bread and butter. So maybe Bijan could find a better landing spot or just go in the second round. And then that team gets to add more value and add more pieces to help make Bijan even better and more productive. So that's it for today. I'll be talking more NFL kind of stuff along with the college side of things going forward. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed the episode today. Thanks for listening. This has been Crystal Ball College Football. Thank you.